You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. It's your host, Tim Link, and I'm so glad you're joining us today. We're here talking to our special guest, author and writer Mike Haskins. Uh, he's got a new book out called How to Teach Your Dog to Drive, The Essential Guide to How to Teach Your Dog to Drive. So it's going to be a fun book, fun, interesting book, and uh, we're looking forward to talking to Mike about that. You know, Mike is a uh, comedy writer. He's an author. He's written for uh, numerous shows, TV shows, radio shows in the U.K., so we're excited to talk to him about this book and his writing styles and uh, what it is to uh, write for TV and radio compared to putting together a, a book like this. So it's going to be a good time tonight. So I want to thank everyone for listening so far. Everybody hang tight. We're going to go into commercial break. You're listening to Animal Rights Show on Pet Life Radio. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Yuppie Puppy City Kitty provides pet lovers an opportunity to earn up to 50% commission selling our premium pet products. Advocate Gina Brick says, The opportunity to share such a quality product line with other pet lovers is amazing. The support of the Yuppie Puppy City Kitty family while working the business is a true gift. Mention special code PETLIFE when you enroll today and receive three additional products free. Find us at www.ypckpets.com. That's ypckpets.com. It's hard to find time for your furry family member. That's where Camp Bow Wow comes in. All day play and overnight camp, daycare and boarding for dogs. Everything is included. Large play areas for fun and exercise. Spacious cabins, comfy cots, even live camper cams to watch from a computer or smartphone. Camp Bow Wow offers the best care and is the place to go where a dog can be a dog. For locations and more information, visit CampBowWow.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. And joining me now is author, writer, Mike Haskins. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Lovely to talk to you. Yeah, it was great to talk to you too. Appreciate you sending aside some time for us. And your latest book, How to Teach Your Dog to Drive, The Essential Guide. Tell us a little bit about the book and how the book came about. Well, if I'm just correct you on one thing, of course, this book has got nothing to do with me, actually. A book on how to teach your dog to drive sounds extremely reprehensible. I think this is a very bad idea. I don't think people should be encouraged to do this sort of thing. Having said that, I noticed that my name is on the front cover, and uh, I do seem to know a bit about it. But... Um, if you look inside the book, actually, what you'll find is that it's not by me at all. It's by a character called Caesar Milligan, who is um, a well-known um, uh, dog trainer. And in fact, this um, this gentleman seems to have set up a school for teaching your dog to drive. And this seems to be the, the manual he's put out, which uh, explains exactly what he does and uh, how you can teach your dog to drive yourself. However, he's got this school for teaching dogs to drive. But you look in the book and I notice every time you see a picture of him, he's surrounded by a great pile of smashed up cars, which I, I think that's probably, um, if I was choosing somewhere to uh, learn to drive, I'd probably avoid the um, school of driving, which has a great pile of smashed up cars outside it. But luckily the dog with him looks OK. But I think this is, you know, this is a dangerous area, really, teaching dogs to drive. <laughs> so this is not a common occurrence in the UK. And I guess the question is, does the dog have to learn how to drive on the opposite side of the road if he comes over to America? Well, that's right. Yes, yes. And in fact, it might even be a little bit easier, might not it, in America? Because um, you have less um, sort of changing gears. Is that right? So uh, more automatic cars over there. So if anything, it might be easier. But this chap seems to have had um, an elderly dog. And he was advised by his vet one day that the dog was uh, having a bit of trouble with his back legs. And the dog vet told him to get the dog some wheels. And uh, obviously what he meant by that was get the dog a little trolley to haul himself around on. But instead he went out and got the, uh, the dog a, a small car and started teaching him how to drive. But uh, he says he's after about four years or so, he had some success and a lot of smashed up cars. But um, I don't know if you'd really call it success. I don't know if it's really possible to uh, teach a dog to drive. <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. I, I think if I recall, there's a new uh, show out 
in the UK. Uh, it has my uh, good friend and colleague Victoria Stillwell in it, and it's about teaching the dog to fly. I don't know oh, if you're familiar yes. with that show. I did see something on that the other day. I know, yes. I mean, you know, they, they just have to go further. You see, this is the danger of encouraging people to teach their dogs to drive. Now we're teaching dogs to fly. Where is it going to end? Yeah, we first worried about the robots taking over the world when we all know the dogs rule the world anyway. You know, it can be useful, I think, uh, having a dog, uh, you know, if you need to get a chauffeur, you know, it's something, isn't it, if you can get your dog to drive you around. So, that, you know, there's many reasons it, it covers in the book. You know, maybe your eyesight's going a bit or, you know, you're not much good at driving yourself and maybe you're just drunk but um, or banned from driving. So, uh, yeah, I suppose the, there are reasons why people might want to stick their dog in the uh, in the driver's seat. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, you know, as we know, the pubs over there, the rules in the UK are very strict about drinking and driving. Uh, you get caught, you get your license taken away. So it's not uncommon, from my knowledge of it, for you to go to the local pub by foot or by bicycle and try to make your way back to, uh, to your home from the village. Uh, so this way, the dog could be that chauffeur for you. Well, in fact, uh, there was genuinely a story to exactly that effect. In fact, that was really the genesis of this book, a news story. Many years ago, a chap was driving back from the pub one night, and he was blind drunk, and he had his dog with him in in the car, and he tried to pass it off to the police that the dog was the one driving to get himself out of trouble. So, in fact, yes, that is the story which, uh, which led to this little book. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. There you go. And your concept of having the dog as the chauffeur, I'm, I'm wondering about that because, you know, a chauffeur comes to pick you up and they have their car all nice and tidy and clean. But what does a dog do when it has all the dog hair? Does it use its own method of uh, the little sticky pads to clean up the dog hair in its own chauffeured car? Or how does that work? That's what I wonder. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is the whole problem with trying to teach your dog to um, to use the controls because uh, not only have you got the problem of hair, which is all floating all over the place, but, you know, the the method that it recommends in this book is uh, smearing all the controls in the in the car with, with treats and little doggy things that doggies would like to eat. So eventually, you know, you've not just got the hair, you've got uh, all sorts of slobber and um, grease and uh, bits of food stuck all over the, uh, all over the steering wheel and the, the brakes and so on. And, uh, yeah, the place would just be a mess, not to mention the great stack of things that you'd have to take along with you to, uh, to encourage your dog to, to make the right turn, give them a treat if they, uh, if they turn left when you want them to. So, um, yeah, the car is just full of stuff. It's full of all kinds of, of challenges there. I can definitely see that because we know our log- dogs love to chase their tails. So can't you see them chasing the tail of the car? And all of a sudden, now you're just going in circles. You're getting nowhere fast. That's a problem that occurs too. Yeah, well, you know, dogs love anything that moves. So put them in a car, uh, send them down to the town centre. They're going to see so much moving. Yeah, they're they're going to love it, aren't they? So <laughs> this is one of the reasons for um, dogs would uh, just love driving. But uh, the problem is they will then just keep going, won't they? You know, a dog will chase things to its tyre, put them in a car. They could be going for hundreds of miles chasing something. So, exactly. Um, and it's probably why there are so many smashed up cars in the book, because, you know, they see a, mm-hmm. a, a rabbit or a deer off into the field. All of a sudden they're going from the, you know, the thoroughfare, the freeway off into the, uh, the field to chase the, uh, the deer or the rabbit. And there you go. You got your car all wrecked up right there. Well, just think of the terrible situation. The dog's driving along in the car, and uh, he sees um, a cat in the back seat of the car in front being taken to the vet. It's, it's just just a disaster, really, isn't it? <laughs> so it seemed like a, such a good idea when the book was put together, how to teach your dog to drive. But I see some flaws already popping up. It's a fun read. It's very entertaining. And I want to come back to this, this uh, commercial break, Mike, talk to you a little bit about writing in general. I want to talk to you about the, uh, the, the writing, uh, being a comedic writer, and how writing for TV and radio and everything is different from writing in, in books or in uh, magazines. So let me uh, break away real quick, and we'll come back and talk to uh, author and writer Mike Haskins right after these messages and you're listening to Animal Rights Show on Pet Life Radio sit stay we'll be right back after a short pause well four to be exact 
malnourished and emaciated. Constant scratching and just being unpleasant. He was shedding excessively. He was losing his fur. Franklin was rescued from the streets of Los Angeles. Bear was a rescue from the same shelter in Kansas City, Missouri that I got J.J. the Terrier. I found his raw meat diet, which is raw meat, eggs, rice, and Dinovite and Licko Chops. His omega-3 supplement on Dinovite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. I've got my ground beef, the Dinovite, and I just mix it all together with the eggs and the shells. Franklin, he's thriving. His coat is soft and shiny. He's shedding much less. They're much happier. Their coats are better. Their behavior, especially their behavior, is better. How do you feed your shelter dog to derive a great attitude? Start that little pet off right. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. Just go to Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Hi, this is Tim Link, animal communicator and pet expert and host of Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have you ever wanted to know what your pet is really thinking? Do you want to find out if they truly understand what you're trying to tell them? Ever wish you could build a better understanding and closer relationship with your pet? Well, now you can. Learning to communicate with animals is a four-part on-demand workshop. In the workshop, you'll learn the essential techniques that are necessary to communicate with animals, including what is animal communication, breathing correctly to achieve the perfect state to communicate with your animals at a deeper level, using guided meditation exercises and method to communicate with animals, and how to send and receive information from your animals. So if you're wanting to learn how to communicate and connect with your animals at a deeper level, visit PetLifeRadio.com forward slash workshop and purchase and download Learning to Communicate with Animals. You'll be glad you did. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. This is your host, Tim Link. And I'm here talking to uh, author and writer Mike Haskins. We've been chatting a little bit about the wonderful essential guide, how to teach your dog to drive, and all the pitfalls behind that. But Mike, you know, you've know, you been a, a comedy writer and author for quite a few years. You've written for TV and radio. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in this area and down this path. And what is it uh, like to write for, uh, you know, write in a book or a magazine or whatever it may be compared to trying to write a, a piece for uh, television or radio? Uh, yeah, well, in fact, really, to be uh, truthful with you, this started off as a sketch years ago. Uh, I had to teach your dog to drive, and uh, nobody would ever make it. So in the end, I, I turned it into a book. But yeah, I've been writing just little bits and pieces, little sketches and things and jokes is what I started out doing years ago uh, on a lot of different TV shows over here and radio shows. And so for a number of people, Steve Coogan, when he was very a young man, if right. you know him, Simon Pegg, I also wrote for uh, where one of his early sketch shows on the television here. So, yeah, that's what I got started doing and then sort of branched out to doing books a few years ago. And uh, I did a big book of jokes called Man Walks Into a Bar, That's um, which I think is available where you are as well. Uh, so that's done quite well over the years, a big sort of uh, book about 6,000 jokes. So that was fun to do, to collect those. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what I need to do is, I mean, you know, maybe I should uh, start trying to put these into into nice stories or something. But this is, uh, you know, just a collection of funny funny ideas about teaching your dog to drive and uh, that's the sort of stuff that I usually do so it's it's sort of sketch like it's the sort of stuff I was doing on radio and television but more sort of in book form just lots of funny little ideas hopefully which uh, yeah. people would like yeah absolutely you know and I love like you said they're written so they're they're quick little stories get a nice little laugh you don't have to feel compelled to sit down and read everything but you can go back to them time and time again and they're still funny so you know it's yeah. good on you for that I was through it now, as far as comedy itself, what do you pull from, whether you're writing for a book or writing a sketch for TV, radio, what are you pulling from mostly? Is it your own life experiences? Is it things you're seeing around you in the world today? Is it uh, going in for a pint, but you end up drinking three, so you come up with all these great ideas? How does that all work about? Well, yeah, I mean, in this one, it is, it is our, our two dogs. We've got two dogs just downstairs here. You can see them in the book. There's lots of photographs of them driving cars. So uh, that's where I've taken my inspiration from. It just struck me that these two dogs are just lying around each day. They don't do very much. I am actually running around, um, taking them out for walks, feeding them. I thought it's about time they started earning their way, really. 
So, you know, I was hoping that really putting them in the book, they would start to get some some commissions as dog models for um, advertising or something. That's, that's not happened so far. So, um, yes, it's coming to the stage where uh, things that are in the house are um, the things that are inspiring me, which is you know, what you have to do. It's take things from real life that you've, that you've noticed that surround you and make them a bit ridiculous. So, um, yeah, that's basically what it's all about. Yeah. Well, and, and I think it's very true. I, I think the, the, when we're talking about comedy, at least for me, it's the things that everybody can relate to. You know, if you've done something silly or you've recognized something that's happened or it's funny or silly or whatever it may be in your life, you're not the only one out there that's experienced that. You may be the only one coming out and stepping forward and saying, you know, I'm the idiot here. Guess what I did or guess what my dog did or whatever it may be. But sooner or later, you're going to find at least uh, you know, a handful of people that step up and say, oh, my gosh, I, I thought I was the only one that experienced that. Yeah, I'm. You know, in this case, it's always fun to sit your dog in the um, driver's seat of the car without the engine running, I should add, and uh, take a nice photograph of them. So um, that's always a funny thing. That's always a fun thing to do, I think. But uh, yes, it is all, you know, sort of observation of, uh, of everyday life and um, finding humour in that. And uh, yeah, just uh, sort of I'm coming up with stupid ideas, which, you know, I always enjoy things you think, where did that come from? But, you know, we still somehow relate to uh, the stuff that's going on around you. There you go. Pulling from your everyday life. And you're right. The, the dogs are always a wealth. Uh, animals in general are you know, always a wealth of not only comedy, but just inspiration and thought and the things that they get to do in their lives. We strive to do. Uh, you know, uh, We work all of our life so we can retire and kick back and, and uh, lounge on the couch for a while. Mm, yeah, I'll come back in my next life as a dog, I think. <laughs> That's right. That's what I always say. It's better to be a dog in a future life than a dog today. You don't be known as a dog today. That's the key. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so select a different body and come back as that. Uh, great. Now, as far as writing, what do you have in the works? Uh, do you have other projects that you're working on right now? I, I don't want you to divulge all of them, but I, I'm <laughs> curious about your, your whole writing style. Do you keep multiple projects going at one time, or is it more of the editor comes to you and says, hey, have you ever thought about writing this? And you're like, yes, I can do that because there's a payday behind it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good, wouldn't it? Um, I'm just doing another big collection of jokes at the moment so uh, that's something that's going to be coming out later in the year I think so uh, another nice big collection last year uh, I did a a TV thing here that was uh, on the BBC which was a fun thing it was a a quiz about museums and we did two series of that last year you'd love it I'm sure you would so the the idea in that was that each each week in the show we'd go to a different museum somewhere in the country and you'd have a quiz with uh, you know museum experts and bring out the things from the museum and ask them questions about it and uh, yeah that was a great fun thing to do so um, we're just also trying to develop other sort of new quiz ideas like that at the moment so uh, we will see so, yeah. yeah well absolutely well we'll make sure that we know that we like to steal your guys's television shows so if you get yeah. any real good ones hook me up and I'll, I'll pitch them for you here in the states i'll be glad to do that for you yeah please do yeah <laughs> Very good. All right, everybody. Well, go out and pick a copy of the book. You're gonna. It's fun. It's entertaining. Good jokes. It's a, a just wonderful book by Mike Haskins. It's called The Essential Guide: How to Teach Your Dog to Drive. And definitely take a look at uh, all the other uh, work that Mike puts together. Mike, where's the best place that our listeners can uh, pick up the book, as well as follow you and all the your shenanigans you got going on? <laughs> I think the best place is. Uh, I'm sure there are some online online uh, retailers that uh, can be found which uh, is usually the best place to uh, to find all these these things that i've done so uh yes the uh how to teach your dog to drive which uh, is the new book out and man walks into a bar which is the big collection of jokes and uh, oh, various other things i've done all sort of books about um getting older and uh books celebrating different birthdays and that sort of thing so yeah you can find them all online i think all right, sounds good. And, uh, any social media or websites you want to tout out there? I should have that sort of thing, shouldn't I? But uh, I don't seem to, I'm afraid. So, uh, yeah, in that case, no. The biggest think- celebrities never do, you know, Mike. That's the way it works yeah. out. 
<laughs> for those who don't get around to it. But uh, yeah, we should definitely have a dog driving uh, website, I think. And then everyone could send us their pictures of their dogs driving their cars. There you go. There you go. See, that was a brilliant idea I had. I'll I'll only take 10% off the top, Mike. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. (laughs) All right. Well, everybody go out and find uh, all the wonderful works by Mike Haskins. Uh, Pick yourself up a copy of The Essential Guide, How to Teach Your Dog to Drive. It's uh, full of chock full of uh, great ideas. None of them you should try on your dog, but they're a lot of fun to to boot. Mike, thanks. Yeah, don't try them at home. These are professional dogs. Don't try this at home. <laughs> All right, Mike. Well, thanks for coming on the show today. We, we appreciate you coming on to uh, Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio, and we'll keep track of all the wonderful things you're doing and look forward to speaking with you somewhere down the road. Thank you so much. Great to talk to you. All right. Well, we're coming to the end of the show today. I want to thank everyone for listening to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Thank the sponsors and the producers for making this show possible. If you have any ideas, questions, comments, or want to uh, tell me who you want to hear from most on the show, give me an email. You can drop me a line at tim at petliferadio.com. That's tim at petliferadio.com. And I'll be glad to answer your questions, entertain your comments, and bring on the people you want to hear most. So until next time, write a great story about the animals in your life. Put it in a blog or book or in an article and... Who knows, you may be the next guest on Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have a great day. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.